Zechariah 4 and 6. If you have it, say amen. Though he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Can we say that last portion together? Say that with me. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Heavenly Father, I ask that you would, your presence would be made known in this place, God. That your, it would be tangible to us today. God, in every struggle, every situation, Lord, we understand that, that it's the pressure that brings about the promise. God, we understand that it's the, the pressure on each side, God, that produces the oil. And Lord, I'm thankful for, for I, I know it sounds crazy, but I'm thankful for the adversity. Because God, it's through adversity, that God, that you have, have, have grown on the inside of me, God. That you have given me wisdom and knowledge and understanding through the pressures of life and through the tests, God, you've brought testimony. And through the mess, you bring a message, God. And I just ask today, God, that you would speak to the hearts of your people that whatever they may be going through, the key is they're going through. <laughs> Lord, and we just give you glory and we give you praise right now that dead things shall live again in your environment. God, this is your place. This is your environment. This is your atmosphere. I pray, Lord Jesus, that, that, that every one of us would see nothing of flesh and nothing of us this morning. But God, may you cover this place with your spirit so that we can see thronely things, God. So that we can see glory, God, that's a, that is just permeating our souls and our hearts. And, and God, giving new vision. And God, expanding our borders. And Lord, we just declare as we have been declaring that this is the season for no more limits in Jesus name we give you the glory and praise for it amen and amen you may be seated in the presence of the Lord my goodness I'm gonna have to stay settled this morning I feel something stirring already Zechariah tells us he answered and said this is the word of the Lord how many is thankful for a word from the Lord and he said, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. I also want to read our opening scripture from Wednesday night and continue by adding verse uh, 14 just for a moment. And bear with me, this will be a little bit of reading, Ezekiel 37, 1 through 10. If you want to turn there, it should be on the screen, but if you want to turn there, that would be okay. The hand of the Lord came up on me and brought me out in the spirit of of the Lord. Somebody say the Spirit of the Lord. And set down, set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he calls me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. Somebody say they were dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord, God, you know, he knows that they, they can live and he knows why they're laying there. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Somebody say live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Somebody say live. We're declaring life in this place this morning. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Let's read number seven. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise. And suddenly, I like to say that. Somebody say suddenly. Suddenly a rattling took place and bones came together, bone to bone, idea to idea. God's plan to God's plan began to start forming. Bone became uh, connected to bone and God began to perform what he was about to do. And it says in verse 8, And indeed as I looked, the sea news began to come. The flesh came upon them and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also, he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, 
Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied. It's important we do what God tells us to do. Amen? So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they live and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Verse 14. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. Somebody say live. How are we going to live? Say by his spirit. And I will place into you, in, I will place you in your land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. I will put my spirit in you. Say that with me. I will put my spirit in you. Let's say it one more time. I will put my spirit in you. Zerubbabel is saying, not by might, nor by human power, by my flesh, not by power, not by human standards, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Ezekiel 37 begins by saying that the hand of the Lord came upon me. Now I want to look at that just for a moment. The hand of the Lord means something to us. The hand of the Lord is the hand that, that will teach us. How many knows the hand of the Lord will teach you? It will lead you. It will guide you. So the hand of the Lord will guide. It will protect. It will empower. The hand of the Lord upon you will empower you. And it is a wonderful thing to know this morning that God wants his hand upon you to empower you, to lead you, and guiding you, and directing you, and protecting you. That's what God wants for your life. The scripture goes on to say that his hand brought him out in the spirit. How many knows we need to be brought out? The Bible says we need to be brought out from among them. So we need to be brought out into the spirit. If we are going to see the glory of God revealed, we have to be brought out and into the spirit. We have to be brought out and into the spirit. And I believe that God is saying that he wants to be revealed in our life. So we're going to have to be brought out of our flesh realm. Come on, somebody and help me this morning. Brought out of our flesh experiences, brought out of our fleshly thoughts, brought out of our our flesh and into the spirit realm of God. Are you with me this morning? It's a daily dedication, so it's one step at a time. The way that we're brought out is a daily uh, relationship with God, daily relationship with his word, daily relationship through prayer, and daily relationship through our worship. I believe that this is the reason uh, why it's hard and difficult to experience more of the demonstration and the manifestation of the glory of God and the power of Almighty God because the truth of the matter is because God works in the power. He works through the Holy Spirit because God works in, uh, He does His work through the power of the Holy Spirit and the only way to participate with Him is to be in the Spirit spirit. That's why we should enter just like we did this morning uh, into his gates as the scripture said with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise saying this is your day and when we do that uh, we understand that it's not by might if there's a dependency upon him I'm worshiping you because I need you it's not by might nor by power but by his spirit his spirit is his power say that with me his spirit is his power Mm. I'm going somewhere, just stay with me. The Spirit is not just feeling the feeling of God touching you. The Spirit is not the moving inside of you, although I feel Him moving on the inside this morning. And I like to feel the presence of God. And, I, and I'm, I'm Pentecostal. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. And without the power, we might as well not be Pentecostal. Amen. So I like to feel when the presence of God comes into a room and changes the atmosphere and the environment. I, I, I'm I'm thankful when he comes in here and sickness begins to be healed and lives begin to be transformed and John said I was in the spirit of the, on the Lord's day and when John got in God's dimension he began to see the dimension of God he began to see in a different perspective how many knows that if we want to see his glory we got to get in his glory 
If we want to see the glory of God, if we want to see signs, wonders, and miracles, we got to step out of our flesh realm and into the spirit realm of God. He saw the Lord with his feet like brass and eyes like fire. And I love even the songs that are written about what John saw, a throne and angels and heard the angel sounds. I don't know about you, but I want to hear the sounds of angels in this place this morning. He saw the four and 20 elders at the altar of God. And ladies and gentlemen, in order for you and I to see what John saw, we have to be where John was when he saw it in the spirit of all my. God. When we talk about Ezekiel in the spirit, we talked about this on Wednesday night and this was not the first time that Ezekiel was in the spirit. This was not the first time that we see Ezekiel in the rim of God's dimension and in the rim of God's spirit and in the rim of God's power. Ezekiel 1 and 3 tells us, it says, and the hand of the Lord was upon him. There we go again. The hand of the Lord is upon him. Would you lay your hand on your neighbor right now and tell them the hand of the Lord is upon you. Oh, hallelujah. We talked about how that, 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 that he was in the spirit. And on one and three, it says the same thing. Ezekiel saw something. One and three, Ezekiel saw a great whirlwind of fire and, and the living creatures. And he saw the throne of God. And he saw the appearance of man who was on fire. And hallelujah. How many knows God is an all-consuming fire? From his lowings upward to his lowings downward. And as the appearance of the brightness, as the color of amber, the bright and the morning star is the whole reason that we are here today. The bright and the morning star is the whole reason that we can come into this place and enter this place and praise him because it was the bright and the morning star that shined in the darkness of my dimensions of, of destruction that the enemy had set against me, but I'm stepping into a new dimension. I'm out of my flesh and I'm in the spirit. I'm out of my doubt and faith is arising right now. I'm out of my fear and I feel some faith on the inside of you. I'm praying that an axe anointing would hit you from the top of your head this morning to the soles of your feet because it wasn't just a little change. There was a change and even 3,000 souls were saved. I'm telling you God's looking for an army that will rise up in another dimension in another realm. God's looking for you to step into his glory not by might nor by power but by thy spirit saith the Lord of hosts. Glory. I know this is going to sound a little bit crazy, but I believe I hear the Lord saying, that's where you belong. Tell your neighbor, you need to be in the glory of God. You belong there. You belong. Go ahead and call me super spiritual. That's all right with me. I've been called a lot worse. But I want to be in the glory of God. I want to be where the glory is. I want to be where the miracles are performed. I want to see the blind to see and the lame to walk. I want to see the dumb to talk and the deaf ear open. I want to see the sinner saved by grace. Somebody open up your mouth if you want the glory. Somebody send up a praise for the promise of his living word. Yeah, yeah. This is the environment that, that God wants us to be in. I'm not talking about dying and going to heaven, but you're going to feel like you've done it. I'm talking about living in the rim of the glory of God. I'm talking about walking in the line of the Spirit as Galatians 5.16 says, Walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of your flesh. Oh, hallelujah. You see, we got to start walking a little bit different. You have all God you need on the inside of you. But what you need to understand, you got to walk in a different rim. Those flesh spots are coming against your mind. Pornography is hitting your home because you're walking in the wrong rim. You've got the power of the living God on the inside of you. And when the devil comes in like a flood, that's when you raise up the word against him and say, not by might nor by power, but by thy spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. I don't care about some dead religion. I want something living. I want something flowing. I want something touching my babies. I want some 
something touching my wife this morning. Come on, if you want the glory of God to your house, in your vision, in your church, somebody stand to your feet and give God the best praise you have all morning. Yeah. Glory, 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 glory. I hope you came to hear a word from God because I feel him. I stepped into a new dimension. I feel a help coming on. Somebody give God a shout for the spout of his glory that's been turned on, opened up. Yeah. Glory. Woo. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not insinuating that you should walk around seeing angels all the time and I'm not insinuating that you will hear voices or hear the trumpets sounding. I'm not insinuating that if you're not experiencing these things, then you are not a spiritual person. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is to experience the operation of the Spirit To experience the overflow of God's glory, you must be full of the Spirit and walking in the Spirit. Walking in truth. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the light. No man can get to the Father except through Him. What I'm saying is the experiencing operation has to be that of connecting to the Spirit. The rim of God's glory and His presence must be more important to us than the rim of our flesh and the rim of what we want and the rim of what we want to watch and the rim of what we want to listen to and the rim of what we want to do, when we want to do it, how we want to do it. God is done with that mentality. He's looking for somebody. I'm talking about a chosen few. And I, I don't know who they are this morning, but say, I, I'm tired of the devil stealing my junk just because I walk in my way. I think I can fix it. I think I can work it out. Let me tell you something. The devil is a liar up in this place. The only way you're going to work it out, he works all things together for the good of them who are called according to his purpose. Woo! So we have to walk in the line of his spirit. Woo, hallelujah. The kingdom is the principle. And this is where I want to get to healing, deliverance, miracles, signs, wonders. How many likes want, want to see all that? Miracles, signs, wonders belong to the rim of the kingdom of God. Somebody say that. The kingdom of God. How many believe you're a part of the kingdom? The kingdom, we talked about Wednesday night, of God is where? Within us, it's flowing like rivers of living water. The Bible says that when you don't know what to pray, the kingdom will pray for you. My God. The Spirit will pray for you when you don't know what to, and what's awesome about the Spirit of God, when you don't know what to pray, when you're understanding, you're saying, this just looks like crazy, and I don't know how I'm going to get past this big old mountain that's in my way, and then your flesh is saying one thing, but all of a sudden you change your frequency, and you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, and I don't care if it's not popular to talk about the Holy Ghost, I'm going to talk about it, because it's kept me, it's healed me, it's delivered me, it's brought my marriage back together when it, all hell broke loose in my home. It's the Holy Ghost uh, shut up in my bones uh, that's kept me in every trial, every adversity. I'm not going to be the dead church down the street who just goes through routine and they just go through principle without the power. I want the principle connected to whoo, hallelujah. You may have the principle, and we may talk about the kingdom, and we may sing about the kingdom, and we may preach and teach about the kingdom, but the principle, listen, I'm not saying that the word is not enough. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying, but the principle in itself is not enough. Stay with me just for a moment. Principle will not heal the sick. 
Principle won't deliver the bound and the oppressed. Principle won't set the captives free. I'm not saying principle is unimportant. Principle is just as important. The word is important, amen? It's the principle is the foundation. Somebody say that with me. The principle is the foundation. It's the foundation on which I stand. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Come on, so it's an indispensable ele- element in my religion to believe what the principles of God are saying. It's the principle that's the foundation. The principle is the stabilization. It's the thing that holds you in right place. How many needs principle? Principle is the truth, but just the knowledge of it is not enough. You can know all the truth about healing and still live wounded. You can know all the truths about salvation and still go to an eternal hell. You can know. But the kingdom of God is both principle and power. Somebody say that with me. Principle and power. Say it again. Principle and power. You say back it up. I sure will. 1 Corinthians 4 and 20. For the kingdom of God is not in word. But what does it say? Is it up there? The kingdom of God is not in word. But the scripture goes on to say but in power. It's not word only. It's not principle only. It's power. I'm thankful for principle, and I'm thankful for power. 1 Thessalonians 1 and 5 says, For our God did not come to you in word only, not principle only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance. There's our assurance. There's power behind principle. There's power behind that pushes the word. Hallelujah. Jude 3 and 1 says, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to all saints. Somebody turn to your neighbor and tell them contend, contend with the faith, contend for the faith. Jude knew by the Spirit of the Lord, somebody say by the Spirit, that the time would come when the body of Christ would slip into a state of complacency. Dry bones laying in the valley. Promise laying, just laying, just laying there dead, dry, desolate, laying there. The devil saying it'll never live. And, 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 and you, you almost believe in what the devil say. I know how he works. Complacent, lukewarm. Sitting on a pew, but not on your promise anymore. Can place it. Sitting in doubt and not in your deliverance. Can place it. He knew that we would settle. He knew that they would settle in a powerless faith. A faith without substance. A faith that was made only by words and deeds and philosophies. Head faith is a dead faith. Ooh, come on somebody, say heart faith is the real thing. Heart faith is the real thing. I'm talking about relationship. I'm talking about hearing his voice. I'm talking about getting in your prayer closet. I'm going to say it till I'm blue in the face because I know the power that's in the closet. I know the power that is in the prayer. I know the power that is in a relationship with God. It's, you know, we have this thing and this mentality that we go to routine of church and we got all the programs and we got the best Easter plays and the pageants and we got the best bands and the best uh, presentations and it all looks sharp and nice and the lights are perfect and bright and I'm hoping for that because I believe that God deserves the best but if he doesn't give me any of those type of things I'll take the power and the anointing all day long we can have the best of things and have the dead of things we can have the best of things and have no life in our services but I'm one of those those peculiar people those weird people that everybody points fingers at and says look at him he's a holy roller they used to call me that when I go to school after a good old revival and tell them about the power of God rolling me in the floor and filling me with the Holy Ghost. I remember my friends looking over at me and saying, he's crazy. He's one of them holy rollers. Uh, Go ahead and call me a holy roller, but I'm going to go ahead and roll until I reach the pearly gates. Uh, I may even roll right through them. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise not only for principle, but the power of God that's been released unto you. 
the power of God, the gift of God, the gifts, everything in the Bible says it's your right to inherit this power. Even though you hold the title deed to the property, it's your right to possess it. God has willed you the power. Turn to your neighbor and says, tell them Jesus gave. For God so loved the world that he what? Aren't you thankful for that? You have the will to the power. You have the will. You have the deed to the power of God. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Please understand this. You have the access to the power. We've been preaching this, but we're going to get it. You have the access to break the chains off of your life. You have the access to unlock every prison door. You will never benefit from it until you press your claim, so to speak, and take possession of what God is presenting. God has willed his power to you, the power of the Holy Ghost that gives us gifts, gives us signs, gives us wonders, healings, deliverances, vision. How many is thankful for vision? Because without it, we perish. But I'm thankful for vision and dreams this morning. I'm thankful for the gift of the Spirit. I'm thankful for signs that that are presented in the power, in the presentation of the Almighty God showing up in this room. And I'm telling you, when the praise and worship team was, was here, I could almost see a cloud of the glory of God in this place and I believe that God is getting ready to present to your families and all those things you've been hoping for that's what God said I'm getting ready to open up the window but you have to understand how to possess it you have to understand that you have to activate it you have to understand that it's not principle it's not the word going forth but it's you activating on the principle that brings forth come on somebody that brings forth the power of God does anybody got a praise activated on you right now come on somebody get a praise in your heart and in your soul and activate the power that's able to heal you, that's able to deliver you, that's able to set your sons and daughters free. Somebody open up your mouth and declare that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. Woo! Glory to God. I want to ask the question in here, is there anybody this morning who is not just satisfied with the principle Not just to know the truth, but to be the truth. Not just to know that it's there as an inheritance and never possessing what God promised. You're not satisfied. You say, I don't want powerless faith. I don't want a powerless message. But you you want to contend with the faith. Just like the early church did. They contend for the power. That's why I sit on the front row when somebody's preaching. No, I'm not knocking y'all on the back because I know God's back there too. But I want to get close because I want the word to get to me. I want to contend. God, please, I need your word. I need your power. I don't just need uh, the, 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 the possession. I, I don't need, just need the, the profession. I need the possession. A vital living faith that produces the miracles, signs, wonders, healings, and deliverance. You are not satisfied with just head faith, dead faith. You are not satisfied with profession only, but you want the possession of what God is releasing. Jesus said when he cast out devils, he was principal and power. Paul said the kingdom is not word only. Yes, it is in word. It is in principle. It is in the knowledge of the truth, but the principle must produce the power. If I have the kingdom principle, but don't have the kingdom power, then all I have is word. Words, not the word, but words, because I'm not hearing the way that God wants me to hear. You want me to tell you why? Because the scripture in Revelation says those who have ears to hear. What does it say? They shall hear what? The Spirit. How many knows you got to be in line with what he's throwing out? If your ears are not open, you will not receive. But I don't know about you, but I want my ears open. How many knows even bones got ears? You know what I'm saying? Even dead things have some ears. Aren't you thankful that God will put some spiritual ears on some dead things? And when he speaks, things transform. That's awesome. God is good. 
when you speak, you are like Jesus standing there at whatever you're facing. And when Jesus speaks through you, he is speaking to your situation. And it has to change from death to life because his word declared it. And when you're lined up with the spirit and activating with the power, pushing your purpose, God can create miracles that you can't even think of or imagine. Paul said the kingdom is not in word, but it's in also deed. If I have the kingdom principle, but don't have the kingdom power then I have words the kingdom of God is only present in power wherever the kingdom of God is present there is a manifestation of the power of God how many would agree with that it produces what it professes say that with me it produces what it professes Recapping a, a, a scripture from Wednesday night, Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Wherever the kingdom of God is present, there will be righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The faith that glorifies God and edifies the church is that faith in God. Just have faith in God. The principle that walks hand in hand with the power of God. The Spirit set Ezekiel down in the midst, full of, in the midst of the valley full of bones. This is how God feels about the kingdom. He believes, and he wants you to believe, that his kingdom is greater than the bones. So he'll sit you right in the midst of sickness and disease. He'll sit you right in the midst of all hell breaking loose because he knows you are greater than the valley full of dry bones. The kingdom in you is greater than the bondage and the oppression around you. How many knows you're in this world, but you're not of this world? Come on, somebody. I'm stepping out of flesh and into the spirit. Greater is he who is in you than he that's in the world. That's one we like to quote a lot, but it's the very truth. Greater is he that is in you than the bondage that is surrounding you. So Ezekiel 7 says, uh, Ezekiel 37, 7 says, So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, I'm trying to get through this sermon because I want you to hear the entirety of this sermon today. Prophesied that there was a noise, and behold, shaking, and the bones came together. How many, tell your neighbor it's coming together. It's, it's coming together. Bone to his bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered over them, but there was no breath in them. Notice the wording there. There was no breath. He prophesied, things begin to move. He spoke the word, things begin to change. There was a change. Notice the wording though. Thing, he, there was no breath there. He prophesied principle, let's just say word and truth. And the things that happened were incredible. They were good things. The bones started coming together. There was order. There was things that started taking place. And, and he got, they got shook up. How many know sometimes we just need a good shaking up? And the word will do that. Principle will do that. There was some noise and, and the sea news and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Principle, truth, knowledge is all good. It brought them together. It shook them loose. It brought some stuff together. It made them look good, but there was no breath in them. They, they were still breathless. They were still dead. Somebody say they were dead. They were pretty, but dead. They were all put together, but dead. They might even been smelling good, but dead. Looking good, but dead. Had their best on, but dead. In their favorite pew, but dead in religion. Paid their tithes, but they still dead. Principled, but dead. Knowledged, Dead. Help me preach. Biblical. He doesn't care how many scriptures we know. 
He doesn't care how many we can quote. He doesn't care about our programs. As a matter of fact, a lot of times when the power shows up, your program gets thrown out the door. He doesn't care that we got all dressed up this morning and we're smelling pretty good and looking good. He doesn't care about all that. We can still look good. We can be dressed up. We can be put together. None of this bothers him because dead is still dead. We can have the biggest church in this community and still be dead. You can have the best praise and worship leaders in the country and still be dead. You can have the most eloquent preachers in the country and you can still be dead. You can have all the doctrines of the church memorized and still be dead. You see, the problem is we got a lot of religion and not enough relationship. Oh, my spirit's going all kinds of ways right now. We got to live it. Not just speak it, but do it. Come on, somebody. We got to live it. We got to live it. And the praise and worship is good in this house, and it's anointed. That's what makes the difference. If all we have is principle and not power, we are dead. But when the kingdom of God is present, how many knows that there is power. We experienced that Sunday, didn't we? We experienced it a lot around here. Miracles, signs, and wonders will follow them who believe. It's not just the pastors he's talking about. It's not just the teachers. It's not just the evangelists. It's not just the apostles. It's not just those who look put together and on TV. Those TV evangelists. And let me tell you something. I love some good preaching from some good men of God that pre presented. And God has given vision so that others can see vision. And I'm thankful for the power of TV getting the gospel out to all the world. But it's not in all the big things. Now, He will show you a big thing. But you got to be faithful in the little Luke 5 and 17 says, Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching. Principle. There's principle. That there was Pharisees and teachers of the law setting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present. I want to stop right there because I want to declare that that they're going to come from every place. Come on, somebody agree with me. That they're going to come from every place. All over the nation, they're going to come. You know why? Because there's a few that desire His power. Not just His principle, but you want to see the power of God. I don't know about you, but what God has shown me is not really this thing being big and, and, this, and the sanctuary having the best lights and the best sounds. And, and I believe that that will come if we're faithful over the little. But what God has shown me is a river flowing in this place, up in these altars. That when people come in from the streets, they're going to be healed. They're going to be cared for. They're going, to, they're going to see the glory of God. They're going to see Jesus through you and I. Come on, somebody. It's time for us to stop walking in the fleshly realm. The devil has been controlling us long enough, not by might nor by your power, but by the Spirit of God. Is there anybody who wants an axe? dimension is there anybody who wants acts to, to to land on the top of your head so you're not thinking with dead faith and dead religion and what you used to know and how good it used to be but you know that there's an axe moment right now and right in this season and what god wants to do in this now times come on somebody tell your neighbor it's now it's now it's now the power is now the power is pushing the principle now hallelujah and all things whatever i ask in prayer believing it shall be received it's now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things I cannot see it's not principle only but it's power it's not principle only that parted the Red Sea but it was the power of God through the obedience of a servant that made the waters part come on somebody it was the power of God that opened up the blinded eyes it was the power of God that opened up deaf ears it was the power of God it wasn't a dead faith it wasn't a religious faith 
belief. It wasn't what they came from. You see, we get focused on religion. We get focused on our past that we can't see the promise, that we can't see the future, that we can't see the destiny. But somebody needs to step out of your flesh and into some faith. Somebody needs to step out of your doubt and into your destiny. Glory to God. I believe there's a manifestation of, of God's power and presence available to those who believe. So we see there in that scripture, he was teaching the word, the principle. There was principle in the valley. And principle had done good, but there was no life. I like principled churches. Don't get me wrong. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I like gatherings. I like gospel gatherings. I like when we have a good sing. I like community service. I like outreach, and we believe that around here. We like to give to our community, and we'll give to it hurts a lot of times. And I love doing that because God will give to the giver. That's not why we do it, but he will supply as we give. Amen? And as we focus on the source, the power, he will give us the supply. Principal churches are wonderful. The outreaches are wonderful. They're great. But when we need not only the principal churches, we also need the church of power. We need both. We need all community service. We need outreach. Don't misunderstand that we need the ministries activating and moving the, the, to bring our community to a good, good place and to bring our community together. I want to see that, don't you? To bring churches together and our community together. Can I tell you where that's going to come from? It's going to come from when we focus on the supplier, the source, and God's going to bring everybody together through the way we think. Come on, turn to your neighbor and tell them it's going to change as you think change. When we need both, we need all of these things. We need the principle. Absolutely we do. We need outreach. We need ministry. We need our communities to be together. But we also need the power of Almighty God. I'm talking about resurrection power on the inside of us. I'm talking about power that will heal and deliver. I'm talking about power that will not be complacent, but power to set captivity free. I'm not talking about a dead power. I'm not talking about a switch turned off, but I need somebody turned on today. I need you to turn the power on. I need you to turn your switch on, the anointing on in your situation. Come on somebody. You got to pray about it. You got to praise about it. You got to keep on pressing and keep confessing that Jesus Christ is the Lord. He is the Lord over my circumstance. He's the Lord over my marriage. He's the Lord over my situation. It's not only principle in my life. It's not only a word but it is the word active and moving and motivating me and transforming and renewing my mind it's the word of God and it was the word of God that was spoken and finished the job but there was a, a half point and Ezekiel said these bones will only experience half the power if you don't finish what God is telling you to say and Ezekiel then said prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and say to the wind thus says the Lord God come from the four winds O breath and breathe upon these slain that they may live that's where I and you come in, church, because I believe that God in this day and hour that we are living in, he wants us to come in to the Holy Spirit. He wants us to come in to a mighty power. He wants us to come in to power, come in to the demonstration, come in to the manifestation. Winds of God blow upon me, saying when we come into this place and get into our worship, we're saying wind of God blow, change me, motivate me, transform me heal the sick deliver the bound and the oppressed set the captive free break every yoke and destroy the bondage every habit has to fall in the presence of God addictions gotta go in the presence of God because the lame will begin to walk and the blind will begin to see deaf ears will open up miracles will start to work wonders and signs will be among those who believe filled with the hunger filled with the power of God baptized in the fire of the Holy Ghost 
I wish somebody right now in this very moment as I'm releasing the principle would stand to your feet and activate the power and say God I believe tell the Lord say breathe upon me oh God that I may live and declare your works and declare as Ezekiel declared breathe breathe breath come on me live in me stand me to my feet let me be a soldier in the army of almighty God I'm here today to prophesy to somebody who has felt dead in your spirit come out from the dead and come into the living come out from your grave and into victory come out of your dead body and into resurrection power there is mighty wind coming from heaven all you got to do is open up and activate the power to what God has promised Woo! come on somebody lift your voice right now and praise him Come on, open up your mouth. Activate the power. The wind of the Lord is coming. How many believe it? It's coming. How many's not satisfied with where you've been? But you're believing for where you're going. The anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit is getting ready to hit the churches like never before, only on those who want it. Give us a, another book of Acts revival. That's what I'm asking. Come on, say, somebody say Book of Acts Revival. Declare it again. Say Book of Acts Revival. One more time. Say Book of Acts Revival. Say, grant it, Lord. Is there anybody believing? I don't believe you. Is there anybody believing? Come on, is there anybody believing for God to pour out His Spirit? I'm talking about a tangible spirit. I'm talking about true healings that last, not just for a moment. I'm, not, I'm talking about revelation being received and, and you walking it out, not just in a little dab, not just in a moment, but I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk in the spirit of God. Come on. I'm changing my will. I'm changing my way. I surrender to your plan. Acts, come on. Touch me from the top of my head to the somebody say, hit my head with your axe. Give me the anointing, God. God, uh, cut off my ways and put in your ways. Uh, somebody else say, open up the floodgates, God, and pour into my soul, uh, pour into my family, pour into my finances so I can be blessed uh, to be a blessing in the day and hour that we live. Come on, stand to your feet all over this place as I conclude the rest of this sermon. Somebody say, the anointing is the power. The anointing is the power. I don't blame people for not wanting to go to a dead church. I don't either. And if you think this is dead, you got problems. Because his word is alive. His word is powerful to those who believe it. And you shall see the evidence of power and you shall receive power, the scripture says. What? After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be a witness. Now, I don't want you to just raise your hand because I'm saying it. But how many in this place truly want to be a witness? Truly, truly a witness. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, then it has to be more than principle. Because there are full churches who are walking around in principle. There's some deadhead religion, principle religion. You're speaking the word, but you're not presenting the power. Turn to your neighbor and tell them it's principle and power. Turn to the other side and tell them it's power. Pushing principle. My God, my God. I wish somebody would get as excited as that excites me. I'm telling you, this is a revelation right here. This is a revelation from God. God spoke this to me. The reason that we can't continually be in the glory of God is because we're in our flesh. But we got to enter the gates with thanksgiving and say, flesh, 
get out of the way. I got to move in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. Somebody has to say it's not by might nor by power. I'm going to just keep quoting that. I hope that runs in your mind because it's not by might. It's not by power, but it's by his spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts wants you to know it's not in our abilities. It's not what we can do, but it's what he can do through our abilities. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's the principle of his word pushing your your talents, pushing everything that he's placed on the inside of you. I wish somebody who wanted to be used by God right now would throw your hands up to heaven and say, Lord, I surrender. I surrender everything that I have to offer to you. Everything that is mine is yours, and what is yours is mine. You see, when you surrender everything, he'll give you everything. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you understand the principle, he will release his power. When you send up a praise, he will release his glory. When you send up thanksgiving, he can't do anything but bless those who want to bless him. Somebody lift up a shout. Somebody lift up a sound of glory. Somebody lift up the spirit of your soul right now because he said if you'll activate your spirit, I'll activate the glory. I'm telling you, I'm talking about angels in the room. I'm talking about hearing the sounds of heaven. Sounds from a higher place. Heavenly places shall I walk in. Devil, you should have took me down when you had the opportunity because I'm walking out of my flesh, not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of host, the spirit of the Lord. Glory to God. And when we walk in this realm, Bible said we could take up serpents. We're not that church. But you can drink any deadly thing. You want me to tell you what that serpent is? It's Slewfoot himself. And you can take in whatever he throws at you and it will not last. It has to die because there's life on the inside of you and death cannot live where life is. Come on, somebody. When wicked comes against the spiritual and the glory of God, every chain has to break. I wish somebody would understand what I'm saying. It's principle and it's power. Come on, somebody open up your mouth and just declare power. Say it again, say power. I'm not one of these that's going to go watch a Kentucky game and scream my guts out and come to the house of God and not give him what he deserves. Because if I'm going to get up, I'm going to scream at the players. I'm going to get all excited about a game. Let me tell you something. He scored a three-pointer in my life. Hallelujah. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And when it went in, everything changed. The game was over. Hallelujah. The game was over. We was down by one. Hallelujah. We was down. But how, how, how many is thankful for the third day experience? How many is thankful for the three-pointer in your life? The three-day experience that he was dead and the devil was laughing. But Aren't you glad for on the third day he arose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And he's coming back to receive his bride. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. The things that he has prepared for you. Streets of gold, walls of jasper, gates of pearl. The crystal river is flowing by the city. Can I tell you in a twinkling of an eye, the eastern skies are going to split open. And the dead in Christ shall rise because they're alive. And those of us who are alive... And remain shall be caught up with the Lord. Come on, somebody give God praise for that moment. Give God praise because you're not staying here, but you're going up. You're going to another place. You're going to another dimension. Woo! Thank you, Lord. I want to do this just for a moment. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I know I'm talking about the power, but right now I want you to understand the principle. For God so loved the world, Lord, let your power be released behind this truth. The Holy Spirit is who knocks on your door. The power is what knocks on your door. And I want you to understand that even when you've been turned away from, he's never turned from you. Even when you turned away from him, he's a friend that's sick closer than a brother. 
He said, when you make your bed in hell, I will be there. And I want to ask you today, maybe you have left your first love. Maybe just like the scripture we talked about in Luke, there's a complacency on you. And you've just been in religion because you grew up in this. And I know that there's those under the sound of my voice that have grown up in church and you're almost complacent to anything that God wants to do in your life because you've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. But can I tell you this? God is working all things together. It's not just about the principle. It's about the power of God that wants to change you right now. Whoo. Maybe you've drifted from the Lord. Maybe you've never experienced what the principle is saying. That he was wounded for your transgressions. That he loved you so much. The Father gave his Son. That whoever would believe in him would not perish. But have everlasting life. If that is you and you've been drifting from the Lord and you want to get in right standing with Him, in other words, it's not by might nor by power, but you want to walk in the Spirit of the Lord and you want a relationship with God, not religion, but a relationship. If that's you, would you lift your hand and say, I want to change. Thank you for this hand. Is there anybody? Thank you for this hand. Is there anybody else? Thank you for this hand. Is there anyone else? Father, Son, Holy Ghost, there's three. Anybody else? Thank you for this hand. Is there anyone else? Thank you for this hand in the back. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Come on, I'm not moving quickly today. Is there anyone else? I want to say it this way. This could be your last flesh step. And all you have to do is believe. The Lord said, confess your sins and he's faithful and just to forgive you. All you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And when you step out of your flesh and into the dimension of the glory that's in this place, every chain has to fall off of you. Come on, is there anybody else that needs a change in your life? You want a right relationship with God. You don't want just the principle this morning. You want the power. If that's you, raise your hand and say, that's me. Hallelujah. There's another six. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else that you're tired of principle? You're tired of just coming to church and it being the same for you. And being dead. God has sent us among the dead things to prophesy to broken things that they shall come back together. Not only to come back together, but to prophesy that life, <laughs> the pneuma of God, the breath of God is present to a believer. And when you believe the pneuma of God is breathing on you, life, more abundant life, even now, even as you live on planet earth, he's going to give you an abundant life. Is there anybody else? One more. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else that say, I want right relationship. I come into this place carrying a lot of things, and I, wanna, I want these weights off of me, those things that easily beset me. I want to get rid of them. If that's you, lift your hand and say, I, I'm ready to, to get shed of this. That's a country way of saying it. I, I need to shed of some things. If that's you, lift your hand and say, that's me. Thank you, Lord. Can we do this before we pray? Can you just give the Lord just, just some worship right now and thank Him for what He is doing right now? What an awesome, awesome atmosphere. Everybody pray this together. Those of you who raised your hands, you know what? Those of you that raised your hands, could you come forward? Would that be all right? I don't want to embarrass you, but just, just come forward at this time. Thank you. You can come right up here. Thank you, God. You see what this is, church, is this is principle backed with the power. And the angels in heaven 
I don't know about you, but I want to join them this morning because they're already rejoicing for what's getting ready to take place right here. So let's pray this prayer together. It's not the prayer, but it's your heart in this prayer that's going to that's gonna change your direction. I believe it's going to change everything. I believe where the enemy has spoken to you and declared and declared death over, over you, I believe that right now the breath of God, the power connected to the principle is enough to resurrect, to break every chain off of your life. Amen. Anybody in agreement with me, restoring hope? Would we'll you stretch your hand toward this way and let's pray this prayer together. And y'all just pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I know I have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Teach me your way. Say, I surrender, Lord, my thoughts, my will, my flesh is yours. I give you praise. I thank you, Lord, for dying for me. I thank you for resurrecting on the third day. I thank you, Lord, for the life that I now receive. And I give you glory. I give you praise. I thank you, Lord, for activating the principle today. I'm saved. Say it. I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Spirit of God. Say it again. I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Spirit of God. Let's say it a third time. I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Spirit of God. Now, can we join the angels in heaven right now? Come on, rejoice. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. The angels in heaven are rejoicing, even one one. Yes, 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 God. Now, I know some of you, you're just rededicating. That's good. Maybe it's your first. Are you rededicating? Did you get saved this morning? Did you get saved? What's your name, buddy? Huh? William. William got saved this morning. What about that? Hey, William, come here for a minute. How old are you, buddy? How old are you? Hmm? How old are you? Twelve. He's twelve years old. Yeah. Glory to God. Come on, somebody give God praise for a twelve-year-old little boy said, I want Jesus. I want the power. Come on, you can do better than that. Somebody give God praise for, for my brother right here. Glory to God. Now I want to say this. I want to say this. Those of you, I know you've we've been baptized and and, and, and maybe you have. But if you want to be baptized again, it's getting warm, so we can pull that thing back out. And if you want to be baptized, we want to do that for you. So if you will fill out, there should be a, a, a paper back there that you can fill out if you want to be baptized, and we would love to do that, okay? We'll set up an appointed time for that. But I'm just, I'm grateful for you today. This is why I do what I do. Thank you so much for responding to the principle so that God can activate his power. Amen. Would you give God one more hand clap of praise and you can go back to your seats. Thank you.